The Fallout universe depends on technology, powerful weapons, complex vaults, power armor so that no one has the gall to ask me why I have so many teddy bears in my apartment. He just likes them. But maybe more than anything, the Fallout universe depends on ways to remove radiation from your character. So today, what is Radaway? And is there anything like it in our non-exploded universe? You know, something like this exact chemical that you will learn what it is by the end of the video? Oh. -ho. Now entering the facility. So-called Rataway is an item present in every single Fallout game and represents one of the only ways to remove accumulated radiation damage from your character. Or poor Lucy here. Typically, it's seen as an IV bag or a syringe, so we can presume that it has something to do with intravenous injection. Maybe you get it done by this doctor who definitely doesn't have bodies in his basement. But before we get to what this chemical in this bag could actually be, we need to know what radioactive contamination actually is. Okay? Okie dokie. What I realized after telling my friends and family that I was going to go spend time in Chernobyl was that there's no real public understanding of what it means to be radioactively contaminated. It's not a property your body just gets after being in the presence of more gamma rays. It's not the Incredible Hulk. For you to become radioactive, you must either have something on you or in you that is radioactive itself, and that means atoms of one unstable flavor or another, like uranium or cesium. External contamination is relatively easy to deal with. If you have some radioactive dust or particles on you, safely dispose of your clothes and wash your naked butt with soap and water thoroughly. This is what the radiation suits you see in pop culture in real life are meant to prevent. These suits are not radiation shielding. They are to prevent radioactive dust and debris from getting on you or in you. Does that mean Fallout suit stats are wrong? Yeah, I could see an argument that they're actually doing something, sure. It just works. Internal contamination is much worse. Not only are contaminants much closer to your vital organs, but because radioactive atoms still act chemically like the metals they are, your organs, bones, and tissues can and will incorporate them into you for some period of time, where no amount of soap or water will get to them. Some contaminants are excreted quickly, like tritium, which acts like regular water. But others, like cesium, can linger inside you for far too long, continuously irradiating you. This is where Radaway comes in. If there was a chemical that could go inside your body and say, bind with radioactive material and then help your body excrete it, it could help you from getting gogified. You know, maybe like an exact chemical that I put in this bag. Ho <laughs> ho mm, Just kidding. <laughs> I would have violent, um... We'll be right back. Today's episode is sponsored by Radiocode. Hey there, gamers. I'm award-winning science educator and rad dad, Kyle Hill. You know, we talk a lot about radiation here at La Facilidad, but there's only one product that I trust to visualize the invisible for me, and that's Radiocode. Radiocode is the maker of the world's first series of pocket-sized radiation detectors and spectrometers, engineered for science enthusiasts like you and me. The 103 is a sleek, ultra-fast detector that I've been using everywhere, from airplanes to mountain hikes. It has an isotope identifier, spectrum analyzer, can overlay radiation rates on Google Maps, provides energy and temperature compensated dose rates and spectrums, has a food contamination testing mode, and has a mobile and PC app with awesome features like spectrograms, search, events lists, and more with more to come. I honestly love this thing, and so do my professors. A number of nerds in our private Discord work in the nuclear industry, and they are already using their radio codes for all kinds of work and experimentation. I love the fact that they can do this with our very own scintillating sponsor. If you have a science enthusiast friend like me or R1 yourself, Radio Code makes the perfect gift to explore the natural world with. You can go to the link you see on screen right now or in the description to get 5% off using my name, Kyle. And if you do it quickly within the next week, that's an additional 9% off on top of that. You're welcome. Look, these little things are expensive, but they're awesome. And you do not want a radiation detector to be cheap. 
That's how you get glowing, my friend. Radio code. Decay? More like, oh yay. Hey, so have you ever wondered what rads are anyway? Like when I'm running around this game and I start to hear the tick of my Geiger counter, as you heard just now, the tick of my Geiger counter from Radio Code. What is it actually measuring? What is the actual unit? Well, RAD stands for Radiation Absorbed Dose, but it's actually an outdated unit. Why? Well, that's because Radiation Absorbed Dose just tells you how much ionizing energy is absorbed in any medium. But we're not usually concerned with just any medium when we hear that ticky ticking. We're concerned with human tissue. So now, in most parts of the world, we use different units, like the sievert, which measures effects on human flesh. And again, you can measure those effects with something like a uh, radiocode decimeter. But when playing the Fallout games for the 10th time, I noticed something interesting. Even though what you're hearing and what you're seeing, the RAD measurement, isn't maybe what the rest of the world uses right now, Fallout actually implements it in an accurate way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a very radioactive place underneath this radioactive submarine in the nucleus of Fallout 4 and see how long it takes me to die. So we go down here, we're ticking, ticking. I don't know if you ever noticed this, but right above me, Right there, you can actually see a rad counter on your pit boy And it looks like that it reads in rads and it reads an increment of 100. So right now I'm about at 650 rads. As you can see, my little guy is not so happy. So let's see how long this takes to go. You know, um, to, to death. We're now at 800 rats. Oh, not feeling so good. <laughs> Nausea, vomiting within minutes. Oh, not great. What are we at now? We're at almost a thousand rad. And... It looks like at a thousand rad, your character instantly dies. Now here's the interesting accurate part. If you look up what is the lowest dose necessary to kill a hundred percent of humans, it just so happens to be 1,000 rad or one kilo rad. Now, did the devs actually do their homework on this or is this just some happy accident that worked with the game mechanics and just how much health you have, et cetera, et cetera? I don't know, but I wasn't expecting to find that exactly accurate number in this game. Definitely a fun little fact for all of you Fallout nerds out there. And uh, now for something um, not so fun. On September 13th, 1987, some men in Goiânia, Brazil, cracked open an abandoned source of cesium-137. What followed was one of the world's worst nuclear accidents. 1,000 unwitting residents would receive the equivalent of an entire year's worth of normal background radiation in just a few days. 249 people were seriously contaminated, either externally or internally, through direct contact with cesium dust. And of those people, 20 displayed acute radiation sickness. Four people including a little girl, died. The externally contaminated were easy to treat, dispose of clothes, take intense showers. But those who had inhaled or ingested cesium needed something else. The closest thing to real-world rat away that I can think of. It's called Prussian Blue. This chemical, taken orally, is not absorbed by the GI tract, but it does bind to radioactive cesium in the gut, increasing the amount of contaminants the body will eventually accumulate and excrete. Doctors gave Prussian blue to contaminated Brazilians in 1987, and it reduced their whole body radiation dose by up to a factor of two. Now, if Prussian blue sounds familiar to you, that's because you've seen it before. It's the exact same blue pigment in the paint that Bob Ross famously used to use. That's right, this pigment, the first artificial pigment in fact, just so happens to both add a lovely shade of blue to any landscape and bind to radioactive atoms in the human gut. Call it a happy accident. 
And this is it. Medical grade Prussian blue. Pigment and radiation remover. Now, I know what you might be thinking. But Kyle, isn't Radaway administered intravenously? <laughs> yes, it is, Aria. But there are only two current drugs approved by the FDA for radionuclide decorporation, the opposite of incorporation. The first is Prussian blue, and it comes in pill form. The second is DTPA, which deals with radioactive thallium, and it's effective when administered intravenously. However, for medical professionals responding to nuclear threats, as studies have outlined and experts have convened on, pill form is the preferred form. They're easy to find, store, distribute in an emergency situation, something that having medical professionals around with syringes just isn't. So if I were to put my money on anything, it would be right away in pill form in Prussian blue form. Yeah. Even Maximus could take a pill. Yeah, I'm, Maximus could find anything with that idiot savant perk of his. Oh, and if you wanted to see what real Radaway would look like in this regard, I prepared some earlier, much like Martha Stewart. I put Prussian blue medical grade inside of an IV bag like you'd find it in Fallout, and so this is, this is what it would look like in the game. Todd Howard, if you are watching this video, please make Fallout Radaway going forward this kind of blue. Scientists everywhere would appreciate you, and then I'll, uh, I'll promise to buy uh, Skyrim on my smart fridge. Deal? Cool. So, what is Fallout's most important chemical? Well, considering that we only have two drugs that are approved to decorporate radioactive contamination from your body, Prussian blue or DTPA, I would guess that any IV bag you find in the wasteland is some combination of both. Though for my money, Prussian blue would be much easier to find. Prussian blue reduces the half-life of radioactive cesium in your body from about 100 days to 30 days, and DTPA reduces the biological half-life of radioactive thallium from eight days to just three days. Pretty good. However, if we had to pick just one, I would have to put my money on Prussian blue. Why? Well, cesium-137 is actually the most concerning fission product after a nuclear detonation. Prussian blue is the only drug on the market that directly addresses that, and it's already in pill form, which is much easier to administer if, um, you know, the whole, uh, world world blows up and there's creepy crawlies around ah, it's coming right for us ah, ah, my electricity does nothing ah, ah. oh and fun side benefit taking prussian blue will turn your poop blue for a number of days uh that's neither really here nor there, but it is something fun that you could definitely see fitting in a fallout game and note you should not eat artist pigment of Prussian blue. The only Prussian, oh, the only Prussian blue that you can get that deals with cesium in the way that we've been talking about is delivered by your doctor. It's the only place you can get it, or you go to the guy that I know. But do not eat Prussian blue off the shelf of some artist store. It won't do anything for you. It's probably bad for your body, and it would make Bob Ross mad. And you wouldn't want that, now would you? Mm -mm. <laughs> nah, that'd be just as silly as making Cold Fusion the MacGuffin of your TV show because you Googled Cold Fusion and you saw a cool prop. <laughs> isn't that, isn't that just something? Okay then, let's continue. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want an unlimited supply of liquid Prussian blue to sip on, don't recommend it. You can go to the link you see on screen and join the facility today. You get access to our private Discord, you get your name on Aria in every single video. There's hundreds and hundreds of you. How am I ever gonna pass the book? How? Why aren't iodine tablets in this video? Well, iodine tablets don't go into your body to remove radioactive contamination. What it does is fill up your thyroid with iodine. That's why we iodize salt, for example, so you get enough iodine in everybody's diet. It fills up your thyroid with iodine, so if any radioactive iodine comes along from 
fallout or something like that or a dirty bomb, then your body doesn't incorporate it because it already has enough iodine. So it's more like a preventative measure and not an active removal measure like Prussian blue. So that's, uh, that's why. Thanks for watching. Haha, <laughs> got you again.